Major Slack videos. Hey, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back. Let's walk through some more Elden Ring and off camera. I went and leveled up to 164. I went and farmed a whole bunch of money at the our new ATM there um, at Mogwin Palace. And I leveled up and made up for losing all that money in the previous video on account of the game freaking crashing on me. And then just burying my money into the Netherlands. And I even checked the um, underground maps and my money is nowhere to be found. It's in there in the Netherlands somewhere. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. In this video, we're going to get um, one of the spirit ashes. One of the four unique spirit ashes that I'm going to be... Um, optional spirit ashes that I'm going to be queuing up for the final boss fight. Uh, this is the Dung Eater Puppet. That we're going after in this video today. This is going to join the ranks of the Mimic Tier, Black Knight Tish, and we already have who else? Uh, Lu Lutel. So out of those four, we're going to be using. I may do more than one Elden Beast boss fight, um, different strategies and whatnot. So yeah, Dung Eater is definitely on the short list of Spirit Ashes to be using for that boss fight. And I'm going to show you how to get the Dung Eater puppet right now. This is an amalgamum. Amalgamum? Um, the com uh, combination. There we go. <laughs> of three different quest lines the Rani quest line, the Preceptor Celibus quest line, and the Dung Eater quest line. In order to get the Dung Eater Spirit Ash, you need to have progressed the Dung Eater quest line to a certain stage. And I demonstrate that, or show you how exactly how to do that in part 90 and part 91 of this walkthrough okay so go do part 90 and 91 of this walkthrough if you haven't to get the dung eater to the point where he's down in the subterranean uh shining grounds in his little cell there and he's sitting in the chair and he's ready to take more seed bed curses you want him at that point there that's all outlined in part 90 and 91 okay so having done that we are now here at the Royal Moon Gazing Grounds, and we're going to start doing this whole area here, starting with meeting Rani at Rani's Rise here, right? And here we can use our horse, and it seems like the most obvious thing to do is to go to that tower there, but that's not where it kicks off. But let's just go there just for posterity. Alright, Rena's Rise, examine, block shut for now. So we'll have to continue on to the next tower. There is a dragon here. Now, um, let me just pause and explain here. All the steps I'm going through right now to get the Dung Eater Puppet, this is, I've been through this three times now, and there's a number of steps I've managed to eliminate. One of which is having to buy all the spells from Perceptor uh, as according to what it says on the wiki. That's not necessary. And there's a couple other steps that I've managed to eliminate. There may be... It's a little wonky, all the procedure you have to go through to get uh, the Dung Eater. There may be one or two steps I'm doing in this run that may be further unnecessary. I'm just showing exactly what I did to get it happening, okay? So, I'm just going to follow my list here. We went there, we went there, we got to go talk to Rani. Just reading off my notes here off my laptop, but beacon that yes, yeah, so we discover. Yeah, we should discover his secret lab first. Preceptor's secret lab first. Here is where we're gonna meet Rani. And Preceptor Sullivan's Sullivan's secret lab is right here. See all this these runes outlined on the map here? At the southwestern tip of these runes is a secret lab. That's our next stop. This should be a safe drop. Let's just go towards the beacon. And there is a dragon here. We won't be able to kill him yet, just to be able to scare him away. There's the dragon. Here's the runes. And there's a secret door here. See kind of the outline in the in the stones there? Just roll over it. And you'll open it up. Take the stairs down. And this is Celevis's secret lab. Take a good look around. 
Once you've satisfied your curiosity, go to the very back and find this message here. Interact with the message. Syllabus puppet. Do not touch. Right? Bring up a melee weapon and hit this wall next to the message. Invisible wall. Go in here and you find a kind of like figure of Cell and the Sorceress here. And the Dung Eater is eventually going to appear here once we do something else later on in this video. Okay, so having done that, hook up your Rock Sling spell and we're going to scare away the dragon. We can't kill him here. we we'll take him on later on, time permitting. It's not really necessary. And this guy always hassles you. Well, let me just uh, put on some... Take him some here. Okay, it's on. And he's got some major frost damage. Let's just take cover here. Let him do his thing. And then we'll blast him with some rock sling to scare him away. That should be enough. And he's gone. Having done that, Let's continue on to this tower to the south here. Pretty sure this is a safe drop. Sorry, this is the wrong one. That's Celevis's tower, we can't go there yet. This is where we're going, Ranny's tower. Here we go. Bugger off. Anybody else? Yeah, I don't want to do this, Doc. Yeah, I just want to go inside and talk to your master. Okay, see inside we go. And go all the way up. We're going to find a side of grace on the way up. Here she be. And let's go talk to the head honcho at the top. If you recall, way back at the beginning of the game, where we first met Rena at the Church of Ella, and she gave us the little spirit calling bell, the little tinkly bell that we used to call up uh, spirit ashes. Remember that? Well, here she is again. Oh, again we cross paths. I believe I said my name was Rena when last we met. It pleaseth me to see Torrent hale and hearty, but tarnished. What business hast thou here? I have no memory of inking thee an invitation. Well, no particular reason, just Dropping in to say hello. We're in the neighborhood, you know. No reason in particular, thou claimest. Intriguing. Then mayhaps fate hath steered thee to this reunion. Hmm. Wilt thou enter into my service? I am the witch Rani. I stole death long ago, and search now for the dark path, that I might one day upend the whole of it, and rid the world of all that came before. Well, has that roused thy interest? 
Yeah, sure, why not? I see. A choice well made. Thou art a rare sword. Not many would have accepted the offer, but I require as much of those under my command. I anticipate good work from thee. Alright, let's exhaust your dialogue. Good. Then I ask we proceed with haste. Art thou aware of the star that struck Limgrave? We are to aware. a vast crater, and through it lieth the eternal city of Nokron. Wow. Go there to find the city's hidden treasure. And that's all she tells you. Go to the city of Nokron and find the city's hidden treasure. I'm going to show you exactly what that's all about in the videos to come for now. Uh, I believe that's the end of your dialogue. Let's just make sure. Ah, yes. Oh, here AG, we go. my war counselor, and Salavis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts, can be found below. Like thee, they are in my service. Heed not their peculiarities. Feel secure in gaining from them what advantage thou canst. I am sure the others will be doing just the same. Okay, and I believe that's the end of her dialogue. Ah, yes. Like yes. thee, heed not their... I am sure... Th okay, so now uh, we go back downstairs. Here's where it gets a little wonky, because you're kind of... You're trapped in if you see all the sights of Grace. They're all, like, blocked out, indicating we can't fast travel anywhere. And there's also the, this is kind of like invisible barrier surrounding this immediate tower until you do the following, which is go back downstairs, talk to E.G., and my notes say, then pass time at a side of grace, then go downstairs to the entrance and talk to Celibus. And then pass time in a sight of grace, and then you're liberated. So, let's talk to Eiji. Oh, so you were the one. Lady Rani has explained everything. You've defeated General Radan, unlocking the stars. A grand reward, justly procured by any measure. Again, I am Eiji, the Carian royal family's dedicated blacksmith. And Lady Rani's war counselor. I welcome one of your caliber. A fellow champion in service of Lady Rani. Okay, let's exhaust his dialogue. Let us give all that we can of ourselves. Together. For Lady Rani. Anything else? Let us give all. Yeah, okay, and that's it. Alright, now I'm curious if I can eliminate the step of uh, sleeping here and just see if Perceptor Celibus is downstairs already. Yeah, he is. Okay, you don't have to pass time there. You can just go right down here and talk to him. I see. You must be Rani's new hireling. Yes, yes, I've heard all about you. I am Celibus. Preceptor in the sorcerous arts. I don't know what it is the mistress sees in a provincial tarnished like you, but since we have the misfortune of serving the same lady, I ask that you kindly try not to drag us all down with you. <laughs> okay, any other happy thoughts for us? I reside in another tower close by. Come and pay me a visit. Should you wish to be of actual service to Mistress Rani, if it were up to me, I wouldn't waste my time on the likes of you. And an Who am I to stand against the wishes of my lady? Okay, anything else? I reside okay, in so that's the end of your dialogue. Should you, if it were up to but who... All right, now. The sites of Greece are still blocked out, and his dialogue is exhausted, so um, I believe now we have to go back upstairs and simply rest. And wait. Because I found in Praxis Run, simply resting was not enough. You have to pass time. So go to the site of Greece, pass time. And let's check, and now we're liberated, you know, have no more red lines through. So that's a proper procedure. After talking to Rani, come down, talk to Eiji, then go down further, talk to um, 
sell of this, then go up, pass time into Sight of Grace, and now we're liberated. Now we can go over to Celephus's Tower. And let me make sure that that is next on my list. Da -da -da. And it goes downstairs, go back upstairs, pass time again. Exit and go to Celephus's Tower. That's it. Let me just make some adjustments in my, in my notes here so I don't do it wrong next time. Okay, so that's it. And we don't need to deal with these guys. Just turn to the southeast. Get to the place where you can safely drop off the cliff here. Right about here. If you drop off there, that's too high. And now we can go to Celephus' Tower. Now remember, we've already discovered a secret lab. Celibus's rise. Well, well, you took me at my word. Did you not realize I was merely being polite? Oh, you provincials never cease to amaze. Uh, I suppose you're here now. Perhaps I'll give you something to do. I'd like you to find a woman called Nefeli to administer a potion. Even you can do that much, can't you? Okay, and accept the task to deliver the potion to Nefeli. Good, good. Now I shall hand over the potion in question. Find Nefeli and ensure she drinks it. I expect glad tidings, and soon. All right, so we have a potion. At this point, he will not talk to you any further. He'll just say, get on with it. I have no time for idle chit-chat. The only thing I will hear from you is a report of your task's completion. Are we understood? Yeah, okay, no problem. Then off you try. All right, all right. I have right. enough on my plate. All right, all right, all right, calm down there. All right, so you have three options now. You can go to Gideon and talk to him. You can go to Nefeli. Whom I believe is in the uh, village of the Albanorix. Or you could take the potion to the Dung Eater, which is what we're going to do. So that means we have to go back all the way down to the subterranean shining grounds below the capital and run through that little um, gauntlet again to get to Dung Eater's location. Right? So back to the capital. Even in the Ashen capital, this is possible. All you have to do is go to the underground roadside, and this will bring you into the subterranean shining grounds, which is still completely intact, even though the capital is burned. So everybody go to the underground roadside. All right, so we got a lot of these badasses to deal with down here. These guys in particular, tough hombres. I'm going to show you what I got to set up here. Equipment. Let's put. Uh, you know, this will do. This is most important the carrying regal scepter at plus 10. Um, you want the ritual sword, Graven Mass Talisman, Graven School Talisman, and the Arrow's Reach Talisman. And as far as. Wondrous Physic, you want Magic Shroud and Cracked Tear, and the Intelligence is not Crystal Tear. And Spell Roll, you want... We're going to start off with Terra Magica, switch over to Comet Azure, then Rock Sling, then Night Comet, then Magma Shot. Those are the five spells you need, right? Terra Magica, Comet Azure, Rock Sling, Night Comet, and Magma Shot. Alright? And... That's it. This first guy we're going to take down with Terra Magical Comet Azure. And, um, oh yeah, one more thing. We should put, um, get some Exalted Flesh ready to go. All right, so Comet Azure, Terra Magical Comet Azure combo on this guy. Get right in, about near the lantern. Take your Flask of Wondrous Physic, Terra Magica, target Comet Azure, empty it until he's dead. And um, abort if he jumps to the side, and then just do another Comet Azure. All right, back off. Switch over to Rock Sling. Take some Exalted Flesh. Target this guy. Rock Sling him. He's gonna get staggered on the third Rock Sling, so don't worry about it. Just 
back off a little bit and just fire. There we go. Keep firing. And the fifth one will finish him off. And I forgot to mention... Well, that's not really that big of a deal. But these two are not going to help Roxling anymore, so why don't we uh, take this one out and put on our newly acquired Halleck Drake Talisman plus two. And switch this one with the Pearl Drake Talisman plus two to give some extra holy damage protection, okay, against these guys. And refill. Same thing with this guy. Let's take another Exalted Flesh. Roxling. You gotta watch that because he'll bop around from left to right and he'll make some of your rock slings break up against the wall so you're gonna have to adjust when he does that accordingly and we're gonna continue on down this way and switch over to night comet and at this point we don't need these two anymore so let's switch back to grave in mass and grave in school And how about, yeah, leave it just like that. Actually, I know what I want to do. Let's just throw in uh, Taker's cameo to recover some health. I'm going to drop down and whack some rats. Drop down here. Something I recently discovered. I've been complaining about uh, the reset camera option when you press lock on. You can actually do that to quickly turn around. So if I was like that, I just see. That is one use for that. I know it's a pain in the eyes, but. All right, and there is a rat behind this debris right here. So be careful of that. Let's just go close and draw him out. There he is. Nice try there, buddy. Boy, he took the, took the hit from my health and steeple. Good on you, rat. These sewer rats are real tough. Okay, having wiped out all the rats, let's swap over to... Swap out the Grave of School Talisman for the Fire Scorpion Charm. And switch over to the Magma Shot. Some giant flowers around the corner there. These guys you can stun lock by just simply spamming Magma Shot on them. So it's gonna pop out, target, spam. Good job. Same thing with the guy up up front, up ahead there rather. Lock on. Got him. There you go. And I'm a little poisoned. Let me uh, eat some anti-poison chewing gum. Couple of little baby flowers up here. Night Comet and Night Comet. And this guy looks like he's gonna get upset. Let's get out of the way. Wait for him to calm down and then Magma shot his ass to death. Okay, we're ready to go. Get some.
Oh, you got me, bugger. I can't believe he snuck in a shot like that. And down he goes. Alright, unlike the first time you came here, there are no creepy crawly hands upstairs. They're all gone. So you can just walk in and talk to Dung Eater. Okay, first time you come here, there's a couple of creepy crawly hands. Uh, I forget what they call her. Those big giant hands. And here's Dung Eater. And give him the potion. Minister Selavis' secret Selavis' Celev potion. No. no. I am the Dung Eater. I am And that's it. And this will end Dung Eater's quest. There's nothing more to do with him. And we can fast travel out of here. We're going to go back to the Caria Manor here at Rani's Rise. All right, what time of day is it? It is late day. Let's wait till morning. And let's go downstairs. Not necessary, but what you want to do now is let me just get rid of these wolves first. Okay, got rid of those guys. We're going to go back to his secret lab and check to make sure that Dung Eater's um, body is there. So if you remember, the secret lab is these ruins right here. And at the south like west southwest end of the ruins right there. That's where secret lab is that we discovered earlier on. Let's go there. Double check. It says my my money is around here somewhere. Sorry, I'm a little still a little wondering what happened to it. Anyways, okay, so um back downstairs. And that mage always appears and then instantly disappears. Okay, so remember Selen was here and now Dung Eater is here. Having verified that, let's go back and talk to Celibus. Let's me let me check on my list here. Return to Celibus Secret Lab, verify that Dung Eater's body is there. We did that. Let's return to Celibus and have a chat. And at this point, we should get the About Your Chambers dialogue option with him. Wrong one. Down to sell a business rise. Not want that. Uh oh. 
<laughs> I thought that was too high. All right. Ah, so you made Nefeli drink the potion. Well done. You are a touch more useful than I had thought. Very well. Then you shall have your gift. Knowledge of the sorceress arts and of the tutelage of the great preceptor Selavis. I doubt much of it will lay within the grasp of a mere tarnished, but if you put your mind to it, perhaps you won't embarrass our lady. And at this point, if you talk to him again, he becomes a merchant and he will sell you, you some right spells. Well, your impatience, though boorish, is understandable. Let's have at it. There we go, we have all these options here, so you can choose study sorcery. It says in the wiki that you have to buy all these, you don't have to do that. Um, but I would recommend buying this guy here. Yeah, I'm gonna buy that guy. And, um, ask him about your chambers. You break into a man's private chambers, rooting about as you please. Your officeness knows no bounds. Fine and well. You tricked Nefeli and had her drink the potion. I believe that makes you my accomplice. You yearn for a puppet of your own, hmm? Well, normally one of your stature would never be allowed. But perhaps I can make a very special exception. Now, choose. And he gives you a free puppet, but Dung Eater's puppet is not going to be available in this selection of free puppets. We have to get that after we do a few more things. Uh, between these two, I would definitely choose the Jarway Puppet. Let me just show you the description for each one. You can pause the video and read that up if you so desire. And this one. Alright, and I'm going to choose the Jarway Puppet. Jarway Puppet. Okay, having done that, um, now let's ask him about Nefeli. Whoops, wrong one. So, you had Nefeli drink the potion? Truly? Hmm. Then perhaps something was amiss with it. It's concocted from the finest ingredients, but perhaps I should review the recipe. I may have expected too much of her to begin with. Alright, and that's the end of his dialogue for now, so we'll simply leave. And now he should climb the ladder. and go all the way to the top. And get a free memory stone to give us an extra memory slot. Done and done. All right, and from this point, we're gonna fast travel back to Rani's Rise. Okay, so we got an extra slot. If we recall before, we had only one extra slot with these five spells, and now we have two, so we have an extra more space for more spells. Having done that, let's go back downstairs. Let's whack the wolves again. Just to get them out of the way. And we're going to return to his secret lab, which is right here. Let's see if I can get that mage this time. You're a real pain in the ass. I really hate that guy. Come on, show your face. Ha, <laughs> finally got him. Ha ha. Ha ha in your face. Okay, and down here you're going to interact with the message again and not entirely necessary but just go in and look at Dung Eater but it's important to interact with the message and then we're going to go back and talk to Celibus and at this point we should get a new puppet dialogue option.
that's presuming the game wants to cooperate with me and do things exactly the way it went in practice runs. <laughs> of course, you all know how that works. For another lesson so soon, Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it quick. Dang it. What did I do wrong? Climb ladder, get memory stone from chest, fast travel to Rani's Rise. Did that. Return to Rani's Rise. Return to Sullivan's secret lab. Interact with message. Return to Sullivan's. See, this, this quest is a little wonky. I did everything exactly the way I did it before. And I'm not getting the dialogue. I want a new puppet option. Um, How's the puppet I gave you? A thing of exquisite craft, is it not? Alright, well, let me try... Um, resting like passing time it says something on the wiki about dropping a starlight shard and picking it up again if you can't get this dialogue so let's just wait And so soon, Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it quick. There we go. That's the option. It's really wonky to get this option to appear, but uh, if you do everything I just did, you'll eventually get it. I have gotten it to appear simply by doing what the steps I just did before. Um, if you can't, just like I said, go back past time at Ranny's Rise and you get this. So, I want a new puppet. What's that? You want another puppet? Quite the keen paramour, aren't we? But I'm afraid each and every one is like a child to me. I can hardly just give them away. Oh dear, what's to be done? Why don't you fetch me some starlight shards? If you can manage it, I'll gladly prepare a new puppet for you. The soul of every puppet has its own ambience. You'll soon come to know once you possess a few. And once each's predilections are known to you, the better you will be able to love them. Oh yes, you have much to look forward to further down this road. All right, so at this point, you need at least three Starlight Shards to get the Obtain a Puppet dialogue to appear. And we already have these. When you get the Starlight Shards, like watch the previous video in this walkthrough, the directly previous video in this walkthrough. I went on a Starlight Shards run and I got everybody eight Starlight Shards. You're going to have more than enough. So we've already got this option in effect. There we go. And now you can buy the Dung Eater Puppet for five Starlight Shards. There you go. And if you so desire, you can also buy the Finger Maiden Puppet for two more Starlight Shards, which I think I'm going to do. Just for good measure. Okay, I'm gonna buy him out. Done and done. And now, um, exit the dialogue. Proving to be quite the puppeteer. I've not had an apprentice for a very long time, indeed. And now we can talk to him again about his scheme. We should get that dialogue again option. For another lesson so soon. Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it quick. There we go, about the scheme. So go to this dialogue option. What's the scheme? Perhaps you'd be interested in a little scheme of mine. It will produce the finest of puppets. 
which I aspire to cherish with these very hands, a ploy to fool even Lady Rani. How does that sound? Tell him you're interested, of course. I knew I had you pegged. You're just like me. Then I'd like you to procure something. A rather unique starlight shard that glistens with amber. With that, my special draft will gleam with nectar sweetness. And even a demigod would be slave to its charms. Alright, and in the previous video when we did the starlight shards run, I also had you pick up the Amber Starlight. And we already have it on board, so we get this option, give Amber Starlight. Well, well. You managed to lay your hands on it. The blessed day is finally upon us. Goodness gracious, the way it glistens. Utterly enchanting. To think this was once a demigod's very fate. My, oh my, oh my. And it appears like nothing happens, but all you have to do is talk to him again, and he'll reward you with the... Ah. Are you still here? Oh, yes, I, I should give you your reward. Yes, yeah, make please. for the reward. It's all yours. It's splendid work. It's just marvelous. There you go, and you get the Magic Scorpion Charm, which increases the damage of spells by 12%, if I recall correctly. 12 or 15%. The merriment is soon to begin. The scheme I promised is to be revealed very shortly. There we go, so lots of goodies just doing this little quest line for Perceptor Celibus. Magic Scorpion Charm, we got a Memory Stone, and we got a new uh, Spirit Ash, two new Spirit, three new Spirit Ashes. And your Dung Eater Puppet. This is a unique spirit ash that you upgrade with ghost gloverts. All right, so that is everything that we're gonna do for now with Perceptor Celibus. So we're building up a, a big supply of goodies to take on the final boss fight. That's it for this run. Nice long video for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, post a comment, and I'll see you next time for some more Elden Ring. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, alright? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.